Hi, I'm Dustin Abbott, and I'm here today to do the first of what I hope will be many RF mount um, Canon lens reviews. This is the first that I have done, and I've uh, got in the 24 to 105 along with my review of the EOS R camera body. And so if you haven't already, I'd recommend that you take a look at that review as it kind of gives you some context for this lens. But something that I didn't say in there that is, but is, it fits my philosophy of what I think is Canon is doing so far, is think of the EOS R less as the, the first full frame mirrorless camera from Canon and rather more as the first delivery system for the RF mount lenses. Because I think that this is where the true magic lies for Canon's new mirrorless system. We've seen already that there is a lot of uh, innovation that's gone into these lenses. And so, I mean, I genuinely like things like the control ring and, and some of the added functionality that comes as a part of them. We'll take a closer look right now, jump in and show you the lens, the design, and how it stacks up to the 24 to 105 L Mark II for the EF mount. And, and so let's jump in, let's take a look at that. So the new uh, Canon RF 24mm to 105mm f4 LIS is uh, certainly a in, in the hand. It is a physical improvement over what I saw with the last 24 to 105 millimeter f4 L Mark II. It just feels, for one thing, it feels more substantial, which um, is interesting considering that it's actually lighter than that lens and it's a little bit smaller. But there's something about it where the build feels less cheap. I, I found the uh, 24 to 105 L Mark II a little bit plasticky feeling, and this lens feels better. And of course, um, physical design, there's the addition of the control ring, which we'll talk about in just a second. There's a different look with the accent scent ring and just the way that Canon has designed these lenses, which is really kind of unique and cool. It sets it apart and it's particularly nice in the way that these lenses marry up to the camera body and just adds a little bit more style to what has been Canon's traditional look and so it kind of breaks things up rather than just black on black some accent there and so I do like that approach. So in terms of these physical dimensions this lens is a little bit smaller than the equivalent lens for the you know for digital SLRs and so um, the lens is the same diameter both uh, the 24 to 105 L Mark II and this RF lens they do share a 77 millimeter front filter thread and they share a di diameter of 3.29 inches but difference is is that this RF lens is about a half inch shorter. It is a 4.22 inches as opposed to 4.65 inches for the Mark II lens. And that breaks down to 107.3 millimeters in length compared to 118 millimeters. Now, of course, with all of these um, 24 to 105 lenses, they do extend a fair bit as you can see when zoomed out to a 105 millimeters. The zoom action here is nice and uh, precise. It's not super light, but I think that the, um, the benefit of that is that you're not gonna have any issue that I can tell with zoom creep. However, if it should be an issue, maybe just in the way that you're carrying the lens, brushing on a leg or something, you do have a zoom lock, which is always nice to have there as well. Now, in terms of the weight, it is, as noted, a little bit less heavy. This is basically one and a half pounds compared to 1.75 pounds or one and three quarters pounds for the 24 to 105 L Mark II. And so that's a difference of 700 grams versus 795 grams. So, you know, not massive, but certainly a significant amount of difference there. So as noted, we've got our zoom ring here. We've got a single inner barrel, no real wobble that I can tell. It feels good. Um, action is precise. You have a um, your manual focus ring here next. Now, of course, the difference being going from the, uh, the L Mark II to this RF lens, RF lenses are going to be running through a focus by wire system, which is pretty much standard with the way that these mirrorless bodies operate. So what that means is that there is no physical hard stop here and that in fact, you're going to find that um, actual auto focus or manual focus comes either when you're in manual focus mode or if you're in um, doing manual focus override with the, the actual um, shutter held halfway down. Now, there is no distance window on the barrel. <sighs> 
Canon has approached that by allowing you the option to actually have a manual focus or I should, should say a distance scale that pops up automatically on here. And of course, you also have the ability to have manual focus aids, which as you can see there, I have applied here. And so, um, so that allows you to also visually confirm focus. And so, you know what? The uh, focus ring, it feels pretty good here. It certainly is no worse than what it was on the uh, 24 to 105 and uh, you can move it in a linear fashion, which is nice, and, and so you get uh, good, good results, and so nothing really to complain about there. It's a different approach, but in this case, I think it's pretty well implemented. The uh, third ring, of course, is the control ring, which is something unique to RF lenses. Um, you know, it does add a little bit of extra busyness to the lens barrel here, but I do find that because of the design of the, at least the original ESR body, I feel like the body itself is missing one extra ring. You know, for example, an exposure compensation ring, which it doesn't have. And so you're relying on this and this. This ring is a little bit recessed. Um, I'm not crazy about it. You don't have anything here at where the D-pad is. And so I feel like you really, for in terms of controlling the way that I like, I feel like you really, really need the control ring. It adds a lot to the functionality of the camera itself. And so um, in this case, I've actually got it set up to exposure compensation, but there is a, a wide variety of different things you can assign to it. You could even assign to it to act like a manual aperture ring, which is also useful. Just a lot of, uh, you know, kind of clever things that you can utilize in that. And so uh, some good stuff when it comes to the physical design there. Now, this lens does have an image stabilizer, and Canon has persisted, at least with this first EOS body, ESR body, in not having in-body Im image stabilization in any kind of real way. To me, that is a mistake, um, but this lens does have image stabilization, and so that is going to make a difference both for stills and for video. I do like the inclusion of the AF-MF switch, even with these mirrorless uh, designed lenses. I like having a physical switch because it allows you to make that um, switch over more simply. And also, it's, you know, sometimes going through the menus or assigning it to a button, it saves you doing all of that. You're used to looking for it right there. And so I like um, the inclusion of that there. It does come with a standard lens hood, and, uh, and this is the one with Canon's locking mechanism. Internally, this is 18 elements in 14 groups. It has nine rounded aperture blades. Uh, you can focus down to right at about a foot and a half, 45 centimeters, and you have a 0.24 times magnification figure, which of course is useful, and uh, that is basically identical to what you find on the 24 to 105. Um, L Mark II. And so uh, similarities there. The optical formula is not identical. There's one extra element and it's divided into two additional groups. As a, So the 24-105 L2 is 17 elements in 12 groups. This is 18 elements in 14 groups. And so uh, a little bit more compact, but my initial reactions to it is are very favorable and that I think that this lens optically, the way that it works with the camera optically, it certainly has, um, uh, it impresses me much more than the 24 to 105 did. I'll also note here before uh, start uh, stopping this is that the um, autofocus is incredibly fast. In fact, Canon is, is claiming the fastest autofocus in the world. So, I mean, it is, it is extremely fast autofocus. It is very, very quiet. Um, the image stabilization works very quiet. And so a lot of really good things going into this lens. Price-wise, it comes in at exactly the same as the 24 to 105 F4L Mark II, which is $1,099 in the US market. Um, my opinion is, is that you're getting more lens for the money with the RF version than you do with the Canon EF version. So as you can see, there's a lot of goodness that is packed into this lens. I even like uh, some of the cosmetic changes here. Frankly, uh, you know, Canon's L series lenses have looked pretty much the same for a very long time. And so I like the modern update here and a kind of a new 
some new design elements right down to you know some of the things at the actual camera mount and lens mount i think that that's a interesting marriage there that adds some visual flair some good stuff there and of course i mean in terms of the functionality and the the images that come as a combination of the camera and lens i would say that this is easily my favorite of canon's 24 to 105 millimeter lenses i'll be back with a more thorough look at the image quality and as well as my final review you break down some other things like the quality of the image stabilizer, autofocus, things like that. And so stay tuned for all of that. In the meantime, I do have an image gallery going. If you look in the description down below, you can see a lot of photos taken with the lens on a new EOS R body. And of course, beyond that, there are also buying links there. And so, of course, if you're considering this lens right now, obviously the best way to get it is in kit with the EOS R, um, since there's no other camera that it currently works on. So you might as well do it there. And so there's linkage for that. You can also find links in the description down below to become a patron or to sign up for my newsletter to stay apprised of all that's going on. And of course, if you haven't already, please click that subscribe button. Thanks for watching. Have a great day. <music>